Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. Tomorrow, at least for me, uh, the launch of the 4080 is coming and just wanted to give you a very quick overview of what's going on. And one thing I will say in the video description, I'm going to put a link to a couple of videos where, um, or at least one, where they do an in-depth review of performance on these cards. So if you want all the nitty gritty, you can get that down there. Um, there's no point in me going through all that when so many other people have done a much better job at it. So the 4090 starts at 1600 so this is not a hard number here. This is the, the cheapest you'll find one is 1599 at least as far as I know. And then, you know, they go up from there by a couple of hundred dollars. Save your money. The fancier cards aren't worth it. You know, just shoot for the 1599 card. That's my opinion. The 4080 is going to come in around 12 or start at 1200 and could go up, you know, for the, again, for the fancier cards. And again, I'd recommend save your money. Just buy the $1,200 card if you so choose. And then just for comparison, a 3080 nowadays goes for around $750. I think the MSRP is supposed to be $699 on that. Um, but we're just putting that in as a reference point because that's the hot card that everybody wanted from the 30 series. Now, keep in mind the 4090 and the 4080 are big cards. One of the big concerns of the 4090 was its physical size, and it won't physically fit in some of the cases that we use or have used. Well, if you thought, well, I'll just get the 4080, it won't be as big. That's not true. From what I've seen, all of the cards made by the different manufacturers use the same exact footprint. So in other words, these are physically the same size to fit into your case. Now, the 4080 does consume less power, which means it puts out less heat inside your case. You won't need quite as much fan capacity and physical volume for the air, the hot air. The 4090 draws around 400 watts. It can go above that number and, of course, below that number. But the typical power draw under a big load is going to be about 400 watts. And the 4080 and the 3080 are, are both or were both around 300. Again, it can go a little above that and obviously below that. But these are sort of ish numbers. Now, um, let's talk about performance. This is the big thing. If graphics are your bottleneck. If the graphics, again, are your bottleneck, then these are the approximate performance benefits you'll see. Now, when running something like Microsoft Flight Sim or X-Plane, quite often the processor is the bottleneck. And in a recent video I did, I showed where they're heavily single-threaded. In other words, you have a 20-core processor. X-Plane, Microsoft Flight Sim are really only going to use one core very heavily and maybe a second core uh, a little bit. Um, there are some exceptions when performing certain tasks, but in general, running the flight itself, they're heavily single threaded. So if you look at your processor utilization, it's based on overall utilization. Um, so it may say 20%, but when in actuality, it still could be your bottleneck. Don't want to go off on a tangent. I'll probably make an updated video on determining the bottleneck in X-Plane. Um, but suffice it to say, if you want to see a benefit by going from a 3080 to a 4080 or whatever card you might have, the graphics has to be your bottleneck. If the processor is already the bottleneck, there's no point in upgrading your graphics. Uh, you're not going to go any faster. So if you have a 3080 and the graphics are your bottleneck, then you can see as much as a 50% on average uh, performance benefit. This is ish, again. This is across a whole wide range of games. Not done by me, the testing. Um, based this on some other you know, reviews I watched. Now, going from a 3080 to a 4090, you could see as much on average as a 70% benefit. Um, in general, the, third, the 4080 is about 25% slower than a 4090. Again, if the graphics are the bottleneck. So this is, actually, I think it's about 20%. So it's about 25%. No, I'm sorry, I got that backwards. It's 20% more money for the 4090 for 25% more performance. So theoretically, the 4090 being the better value there. Um, but you have to keep all the other things into consideration. Is it your bottleneck? Do you have the power capacity? Do you have the ability to evacuate that much heat? So this is sort of the, the nitty gritty. Uh, this is the performance, this is the power, these are the prices. And again, the big one being, if graphics are your bottleneck, 
And if it's your CPU, going to a faster graphics card is not going to make any difference whatsoever. And this is with a new computer or with an existing computer.